First on the Western Slope, you're watching KREX 5 News at 10 p.m. Good evening and thank you for choosing KREX 5 News. I'm Jocelyn Stafford. Roughly 8,400 Colorado grocery workers walked out on strike today. Workers tell us they're fighting for a livable wage and improved working conditions at dozens of Kroger-owned King Supers and City Market stores. Carrie X5's Austin Sack has kept a close eye on the front range negotiations and shows us how it may impact all of us here on the Western Slope. Grocery workers across the state joined the picket lines to strike back against unfair labor practices. Employees are fed up with negotiations and sick of customers' pandemic-fueled attacks. Every single one of our grocery stores, we've had workers slapped, spit on, pushed, beat up. Our stores are getting robbed. It's just the general public coming into these stores, frustrated if there's not supplies in the store or short staffing or over the mask mandate. For a company that's saying they, they wish we wouldn't go on strike, they made it very easy for it to be the right choice. Andre is among thousands of Kroger employees walking the picket line for a livable wage. But United Food and Commercial Workers Local 7 union leaders tells us they're fighting for all King Supers and City Market employees, not just front range workers. Having equal treatment with those folks uh, for Grand Junction to try and get them up to the same level of wages as the folks who are working for King Supers here on the front range, and that's one of our many goals. Kroger finally offered the union salary increases just 24 hours before the planned strike, but only for front range employees. Their offer was unacceptable. King Supers needs to come to the table, they need to bargain in good faith, and they need to make sure that they give their employees a fair and honorable contract that respects them, that pays them a livable wage, and protects them in their workplace. That's what we're fighting for right now, you know? Um, if we had competitive wages, we wouldn't need to hire gig workers to come do our work. For now, picket signs are only on the front range, but the fight stretches across the mountains. We had wage proposals on the table that were for all of the stores, not just a select few. Unionized city market locations here on the Western Slope expire at the end of this month. Until then, all eyes are on the front range. First on the Western Slope, I'm Austin Sack, KREX 5 News. So no strikes planned for the Grand Valley yet, but come February 1st, local union representatives will sit down at the bargaining table. If the front range strike does not solve all issues for all King Supers and City Market stores, including ours in Western Colorado, that's when we could see local workers walk off the job. Switching gears, embattled Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters told CARIX 5 today she'll address an offer from the Colorado Secretary of State's office by tomorrow. Secretary of State Jenna Griswold gave Peters three days to respond to an offer outlining a path to serve out her election's term. Peters is racing the clock to reject or accept the offer, which comes with several strings attached. Those conditions include allowing the secretary's office to oversee Mesa County election security, barring Peters access to secure areas of the elections office or equipment, requiring an appointed person to accompany Peters at all times, and to retract specific comments she made regarding elections equipment and a willingness to compromise voting systems. The order will bar Peters from making any changes in the elections division and require her to file daily written reports on anything she does within the division. If Peters fails or refuses any part of the order, the secretary's office could seek a court order officially removing Peters as the designated ele election official. KX5 spoke to Peters today and she said she hasn't made a decision yet, but will hold a press conference tomorrow. We'll keep you posted. The feds just delayed the trial of a mantra's mother and daughter implicated in a scheme to sell body parts. The FBI raided Sunset Mesa Funeral Home and indicted Shirley Cook and Megan Hess in 2020. Court filings in multiple civil suits against Hess allege she agreed to cremate deceased people, but instead harvested and sold their body parts or entire bodies without consent from families. Federal investigators charged both defendants with six counts of mail fraud and three counts of illegal transportation of hazardous materials. The court granted the defendants a continuance or motion for an extension of time on December 30th. This means the trial is postponed for now. The current docket shows a scheduling conference is set for January 19th. Officials say the new trial date must occur before August 8th of this year. 
The Marjorie Building in downtown Grand Junction stood the test of time for well over a century. Unfortunately, time may be taking a bit of a toll on the iconic structure. Cora Dickey talked to a business owner and has the story. Five local businesses packed up and will temporarily move out of 523 Main Street in Grand Junction after a notice from city inspectors. There was lots of flooding in the Marjorie building and they checked it out. Dickey believes the damage happened after a summer storm. But there's some like collapsing beams that are pretty important to keep the structure to you know up and upright. While some businesses moved a few blocks away, Estillos too had to move to Highway 6 and 50. It's only been two days since the salon opened at the temporary location, but the owners tell me things are going well so far. We were pleasantly surprised that this is working out for us. This location used to be a salon, so it was a perfect opportunity for us to be able to move in here for the short period of time. One huge blessing is being able to find a place that would offer short-term leasing. We can't stay here a year, <laughs> but we have a, a little time to be able to be here that hopefully we don't have to go another place. Although the move had to be quick, Dickie stresses it's temporary for her and other businesses. But we will go back because this place is not a permanent, could not be permanent. We like being down in downtown, in the downtown area, the beautiful historic Grand Junction. There is no concrete idea when these local businesses can come back, but owners have to get the green light from the city first after a final walkthrough. Reporting first on the Western Slope, Cora Dickey, KRX5 News. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been earmarked for improving a Mesa County intersection. Mesa County commissioners recently approved an agreement totaling more than $950,000 with Mountain Valley Contracting. The funds are going towards an improvement project on State Highway 141 at Springfield Road. Organizers say the project aims to add auxiliary turning lanes at the intersection. This road widening requires extending both ends of the existing Orchard Mesa Canal concrete box structure under the highway. Work begins this week and will be carried out in four phases. The anticipated completion date is May of this year. In other news, the American Red Cross recently announced there is a national blood crisis. It comes as the country continues to grapple with COVID-19. As a result, the country is experiencing a drop in blood drives, which should limit surgeries and other treatments for millions of Americans. The Red Cross supplies 40% of the country's blood supply and has seen a 10% decrease in donations since March of 2020. Several factors are causing the blood shortage, including fewer blood drives, staffing limitations, and of course, it's active flu season. Dr. Pampy Young, Chief Medical Officer of the National Red Cross, says accident victims, cancer patients, and people with blood disorders like sickle cell disease are among those that are most at risk from declining donations. CARIEX talked to the president of St. Mary's Hospital, Brian Johnson, and he confirms, at least for now, that's not a problem here on the Western Slope. We've actually been pretty fortunate with blood supply on the Western Slope. Um, we've had a, you know, St. Mary's has run a blood uh, donation center uh, for, for in the area for almost 70 years. And so we've been pretty fortunate. We have a large group of dedicated donors that are on the Western Slope. Johnson says our area does have shortages like the rest of the country does, but the commitment and support of our local communities so far has prevented any shortages. And now let's take a look at the most recent COVID case count for Mesa County. According to the most recent information posted on the county's data dashboard, there are 268 new cases of coronavirus since the previous report. The one-week average positivity rate is at 16.4 percent. 42 people are currently hospitalized and there have been eight deaths within the past two weeks. Having adequate access to mental health resources, especially in times of crisis, is a top priority for Mesa County Commissioners. A new report from the Colorado Sun shows three state agencies will audit Mind Springs Health in 10 Colorado counties, including Mesa County. We've been looking into the story and what prompted state officials to dig deeper. State investigators from the Colorado Department of Health Care Policy and Financing, Department of Human Services, and Department of Public Health and Environment are reviewing Mind Springs files and financial documents. I think there are certainly problems in how programs are operated, um, how they're um, providing services or not to people in the community. Their system is, is, needs some fixing, definitely. 
The Colorado Sun article reports Colorado taxpayers invest $437 million into 17 mental health facilities every year. Mine Springs is under fire because public officials and residents told Colorado Sun reporters the agency failed to help people in mental health crisis and its leaders never publicly accounted for spending. Mesa County Commissioners welcome the audit. I think it's good that um, the state is taking a look at this. I really do. Commissioner Janet Rowland feels confident the audit will find no wrongdoing. I'm not concerned that they're going to find any type of fraud or anything like that that would you know, make them close their doors down. A spokesperson at MindSpring sent me this statement, quote, right now any media interviews will detract our employees from the state's review. Therefore, we are declining interviews at this time. As investigators move forward, any findings of fraud, waste and abuse, or violations of health and safety standards or financial transparency will be made final in the review. Reporting first on the Western Slope, I'm Chance Stickland, KREX 5 News. Summit County Jail is just one facility that's ended its contract with the Mental Health Center. Well, when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Russ Pappas has your full weather forecast. Don't go anywhere.